Hi, everybody. So um, I think this will be our last series of connective tissue. So we are going to discuss blood, which is part of the fluid um, connective tissue. Okay, and as usual, I'm Dr. Omende. So these are going to be our objectives. I'll focus mainly on the uh, most important uh, part, which is how do these um, cells of the blood appear under light microscopy, basically. But we'll mention the functions and one or two things that come up. So what are the functions of blood? It help to transport nutrients, oxygen, waste, carbon dioxide to the tissue and from the tissue. The blood also helps to convey hormones to target organs. The cytokines and chemokines that are produced by immune cells are able to, you know, be moved throughout the body and other soluble regulatory molecules. Blood also transports leukocytes and antibodies through the tissue, so to ensure proper immune um, protection. And then also to maintain homeostasis, okay? So the blood, of course, has two parts. I think you did this in secondary school. There's a liquid part of blood, which is plasma, and there's a cellular part. And we have three major types of cells, the platelets, the white cells, which are the leukocytes, and the red cells, which are the erythrocytes. And the red cells are the abundant. They occupy 45%. So the leukocytes, the white blood cells, are divided into two granulocytes. Okay, they have granules in the cytoplasm. So majority of the granulocytes are neutrophils, followed by eosinophils at 4% and basophils at 1%. So these will come in your MCQs, okay? Then our granulocytes do not have granules. So we have lymphocytes, two types of lymphocytes, B cells and T cells, although we also have the natural killer cells. These are 27% of the white blood cells. And then we also have monocytes, these are approximately 8% of the white blood cells. So this is how you classify blood cells. So if you to look here, this with a clear central portion, that's a red blood cell. This is how the platelets look like. This is a lymphocyte. They're usually bigger than the red blood cells with a large nucleus and a thin rim of cytoplasm there. This is a neutrophil, always a big cell with multi-lobed nuclei. You can look at the nuclei there. It's multi-lobed. So... The red blood cells have a lifespan of 120 days, okay, and usually they are by concave di disc, okay, that measures 8 micrometers in diameter and 2 micrometers thick at the thickest portion and 1 micrometer at the thinnest portion. So the shape of the red blood cell is maintained by cytoskeletal complex. The cytoskeleton are within the um, plasma membrane. So this contains pectrin actin and other components remember the blood, blood red blood cell is flexible so it's able to change shape to pass through very small capillaries under light microscopy they appear as pink cells but the center is light okay so the center is thinner because of the biconcave shape the red blood cell has no nucleus function of red blood cell to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide usually um, these are bound onto hemoglobin as oxyhemoglobin and carboxyhemoglobin correspondingly. And majority of the carbon dioxide is transported in form of bicarbonate ions. So under electron microscope, that's the biconcave shape of the red blood cell. And under light microscopy in the blood smear, this is how the red blood cells look like. So the center looks a bit um, clear. Okay, this is your red blood cell. You can see they have the shape is different it, it can change its shape the platelets which are also called thrombocytes their lifespan is 10 days so so it's shorter they are usually small and biconvex two to three millimeter uh, micrometer in diameter again they have non-nucleated cell fragments uh, which are derived from the cytoplasm of a very large cell so platelets come from what you call megakaryocyte the biggest cell in the bone marrow the megakaryocyte okay that's what gives you your platelets so under light microscope they look small they have small basophilic fragments okay they appear as small basophilic fragments basophilic means they take up the basic stain and usually they appear in clusters so small basophilic fragments appearing in clusters those are platelets remember they are small and biconvex and the electron microscope they are usually bound by plasma membrane you will appreciate the plasma membrane and microtubules bundles around it then you will see granules within the cytoplasm and these granules contain fibrinogen plasminogen 
thromboplastin and other clotting factors. So name four components of the um, granules of a platelet, fibrinogen, plasminogen, thromboplastin, and clotting factors. Okay, then there are also membrane tubules and glycogen. So what are the functions of platelets? The main one is to initiate clotting of blood. So these are your platelets, small basophilic fragments. These are your, um, sorry, these are your red blood cells with a clear cent center. They lack nuclear. We go to white blood cells, neutrophils, polymorphonuclei, polymorphonuclei, leukocytes, which are the neutrophils. The lifespan is less than one week. These lifespans will come in your MCQ most likely, less than one week. So we have um, gran neutrophils are granulocytes, so they have granules in the cytoplasm and they have two types of granules, the specific and non-specific granules. So specific granules, what are the components of specific granules? Type 4 collagenase, which is an, uh, that aids in migration, lactoferrin, usually sequesters iron, okay, phospholipase A2, that helps in leukotriene synthesis, and lysozyme, that digests bacterial cell wall. Okay, so those are the specific granules, type 4 collagenase, lactoferrin, phospholipase A, and lysozyme. Non-specific granules in the neutrophil contain enzymes such as um, lysozymes, acid hydrolase, and myeloperoxidase and elastase. Light microscopic features of a neutrophil, it has 9 to 12 micrometer in diameter, therefore it's larger than a red blood cell, and the nuclei is usually long and multilobulated, having two to four lobes. The cytoplasm has small, uh, neutrally stained specific granules and also azurophilic non-specific granules. Under electron microscope, neutrophils are multi-lobed. We've said you'll see multi-lobed nuclei with numerous specific granules and the lysosomes. And these granules are azurophilic. What are the functions of a neutrophil? They have antibacterial function. Okay, they're usually the first cell that is called upon for defense in acute inflammation. So they leave the blood. They follow chemotactic signals, go to the site where the wound is, they phagocytose the foreign agent like bacteria, and then um, usually pass composed largely of dead neutrophils. So if you cut yourself somewhere, the chemotactic signals that will be produced will now call the neutrophils to come and phagocytose bacteria. So these are the neutrophils, larger than red blood cells, then the nu nuclear is multi lobulated and the cytoplasm has both specific and non-specific granules okay so this is you learn more of this in physiology so neutrophils usually respond to chemotactic factors so they're able to migrate and follow the chemical signals so the chemokine synthesis and matrix proteolysis when they get to the target of the wound they and phagocytose the bacteria and destroy the bacteria because of the uh, contents of the granules remember we said we have lysozymes and enzymes which can destroy the the microbe also they contain um, reactive uh, oxygen compounds which also help to destroy bacteria okay then um, lactoferrin is also present to sequester iron usually neutrophils are the first cell of response in acute inflammation so this is your bacterium here okay and you can see uh, within the cell you have your lysozyme so bacteria is taken up by the neutrophil is phagocytosed comes in and destroyed within the lysozyme okay and then um, released the debris is released eosinophil what is the lifespan less than two weeks Light microscopic features, 10 to 14 micrometer in diameter, and they have a bilobed nuclei, two portions, bilobed nuclei. The cytoplasm is pink red, that's why we're saying it's eosinophilic cytoplasm, it's an eosinophil because of pink red specific granules, okay? They take up eosin dye, which is acidic. If the smear is not stained properly, the granules may be brownish, so pink red or brownish. And electron microscope, the specific granules are ovoid in shape and they contain crystalloid body composed of a major basic protein. So usually effective against parasites. So when you have parasites in the body, eosinophils are the best cells to deal with parasites, such as Plasmodium falciparum in malaria, such as uh, parasites such as Ascaris lumbricoides, the worms in the GI. So the rest of the granule contains other antiparasitic substances. So the cytoplasm contains lysozyme. So you have azurophilic granules. What are the functions of eosinophil? 
antiparasitic, okay? So they mediate, also mediate against allergic responses, but the main antiparasitic. So this is our neutrophil, pink specific granules, pink red specific granules in the cytoplasm, and the nucleus is bilobed, okay? One, two, they're actually joined here. So bilobed nucleus, it's 10 to 14 micrometer in diameter, bilobed nuclear, and the cytoplasm has pink red um, specific granules that take up the eosin stain, okay? Basophil, what is the lifespan? One to two years. The diameter, 8 to 10 micrometers. The cytoplasm contains purple-black granules, okay, which are larger than those of eosinophil, but they're purple-black. So they take up basic stain. That's why they're called basophils. So the cytoplasm has basophilic granules, purple-black granules, okay? Then these granules are larger than those of eosinophils, but they're not as numerous. They're not many but they are larger. The nucleus also bilobed. So eosinophils and basophils are bilobed, neutrophil multilobulated nuclei. But this nuclei of a basophil, it's usually obscured by the granules which lie over it. So you may not see it. It's partially obscured, partially covered by the granules. So those are the differences between basophil and eosinophil. Both are bilobed, but eosinophil has eosinophilic granules that are many. This one has basophilic granules, not as numerous. And the granules in basophils are larger and partially obscured, and partially obscure the bilobed nucleus. Under electron microscope, the basophil has specific granules that vary in size and shape, and they occasionally have myelin figures usually from the phospholipids. The cytoplasm has lysosomes, and this gives them the azurophilic appearance. What's the function of basophils? Allergies, and in anaphylactic or hypersensitivity reaction, when you hear somebody is allergic to stings, allergic to peanuts, is this basophils that are responsible for the hypersensitivity reaction. These are reactions that occur suddenly because of um, immune response, and it can lead to death. So you have these basophils, they bind, um, uh, they have immunoglobulin E antibodies on their surface, which will bind antigens, okay, and cause an allergic reaction. So what happens? This hypersensitivity reaction is where you cause vessels to dilate. So you take blood from the organs into the surface of the skin leading to shock. So the organs are not getting enough blood supply because the other vessels have dilated and they're taking up more blood. So you get anaphylactic shock. You can also get bronchial spasms. So your respiratory tract contracts, you're not passing in enough air. So this situation, hypersensitivity reactions can kill because of anaphylactic shock, lower blood pressure because vessels have dilated and blood is not circulating to organs and your bronchitis have contracted spasm. So you're not taking in oxygen because the immunoglobulin on the surface of basophils have um, bound onto antigens of bacteria or whatever it is, the, the microbes, causing an allergic reaction. So they're slightly similar to mast cells in the tissue, which also have IgE, immunoglobulin E, receptors. So this is how a basophil looks like. This is how an eosinophil looks like. So red, pink, cytoplasm, eosinophil, acidic granules. Black, blue, purple, blue uh, cytoplasm granules. This is basophil, okay? You can see the granules. And then the nuclear, both of them are bilobed, but in basophil, the granules obscure. They sort of cover the nuclear. You can't see the nuclear very well. So this is a basophil, eosinophil, and definitely these are red cells with clear central portions. The lymphocytes, usually the lifespan is variable from few days to various years, and under light microscopy, they have a round and dense nuclei, and their cytoplasm uh, of uh, lymphocyte, of course, is usually small because they have a large nuclei that pushes the cytoplasm, so you have a narrow rim of um, cytoplasm around the large nuclei. Okay, so you have T cells and B cells that cannot be distinguished under light microscopy in the blood smear. So what's the function of lymphocytes? You have cellular and humoral immunity. So B cells are responsible for the humoral immunity. They have 
differentiate into plasma cells that produce antibodies, immunoglobulins, okay, produced by B cells. Then T cells, we have two types, cytotoxic T cells that help to deal with cancer cells or cells infected by viruses, and T helper cells which recognize macrophages that bring bacteria to them. So T helper cells, okay, they recognize bacteria brought by antigen-presenting 